Hey guys, in this video we've got another short course truck for you. This is the Red Cat Racing SC Pro and this one's the Blackout now. This has been mentioned in the comments that you guys want to see this one in the shootout and this one's surprisingly inexpensive, which kind of raises some alarm bells. Is it going to be as good as the more expensive cars? In this video we're going to get it out of the box, see what makes it tick as we normally do then we're going to take it out and we're going to test it and we're going to test it just like everything else then we're going to bring it back in we're going to show you what happened and then we're going to ask our four questions is it fun is it durable is it worth the money and where does it stack up should this one be in the shootout we'll find out today check this out All right, so let's get this thing out of the box. Okay, we've got our packet there. Charger, transmitter, cool. You know, it's a little smaller than the other ones. I had a feeling it was gonna be. Take a look at this. Okay, what do we got here? A couple of zip ties. Come on now. Actually, they weren't zip ties. That was wired down. So have a look at this. Now, this is kind of curious, but it's kind of cool looking. It feels a little bit small, but until we run it, we won't run. We won't really know what that means. Looks pretty cool. So we need to get down inside of this, but first we got to get this plastic off. And I really enjoy this because you only get to do this once for each car. So here we go. They definitely don't want this stuff coming off. <laughs> That's the first time that was a job to get off. But take a look at this. You know, for the money, this is a really cool looking little truck. It's got a nice carbon fiber look to it. The reds, the whites, the grays, they all go together really nice. Got kind of a cool looking front end on it. I like the wheels. Be interesting to see how the tires hold up. Isn't that cool? We'll get this down next to one of the other ones and see what the size difference is. But before we do that, let's see what else comes in the box. Ooh, tightly packed in there. So we've got a little box here. I assume that's a charger. We've got the transmitter here, an extra aerial for the car and a binding loop. So this is the Red Cat radio for the car and this is the 2CE. And it looks like a pretty simple radio. It's pretty small. The spring tension's a little bit tight, but I think you could get used to it. It really has the shape of a Dumbo RC, but I think this is, has nothing to do with it. It's a little bit different, but it has kind of the same feel to it as far as that goes. And if you look down in here, you've got your reversing for your servo and your speed control. You've got your trim settings here, on off switch there, and your dual rate for the steering, which is nice so you can set how touchy the steering's gonna be. So it's a pretty plain radio as far as that goes. I'll be curious to see how this works. This is the first Red Cat that we've had in the studio, 
So I don't really know how that's gonna work out. We'll find out today. Also, in this box, and I'm assuming this is the charger, let's see. Okay, yeah, it is the charger, and it's a Hexfly charger here, and we'll look into this to see what's involved in that. It looks like a slow charger. It only has the connector for 2S and 3S on here, so a pretty basic charger. We'll try it the first time, see how it works, but we have much better chargers and batteries here at the studio. So we'll use this on the first round to see how it works, make sure everything functions the way it's supposed to. Also, inside of here, you get this. This is the user manual for the speed control, and it's a pretty comprehensive looking piece of material here, and it tells you everything you need to know to do the settings, and it even tells you where the settings are when you program it. So that's pretty cool looks pretty complete there's some options here for chargers and batteries and then of course the one that you really need and this is the manual and i did take a quick peek through it when i pulled it out of the packet and it does have the complete breakdown inside of it with all the part numbers and everything and it covers everything in the car so it looks it's not very thick so it's not a long read but it looks like a pretty good manual for what you get Keep in mind, this is a real inexpensive short course truck. So for the money, I'm hoping it holds up enough to make it worth what you pay. Okay, so that being said, let's get down inside this thing and see what makes it tick. Now I haven't had the body off of this yet, so this will be a first for both of us. And like I say, this is the first Red Cat that we've had in the studio. So I'm really curious to see how things are gonna go. So it shows the connection points for the battery. So if you're new to the hobby, this has a flyer in here that shows you the proper connection points and all that stuff to get it hooked up. So let's get that out of the way real quick here. There we go, we'll set that aside. And let's have a look down inside this. Now it has a fairly narrow chassis as far as that goes. It feels really tight and simple in the center. It's got a nice brace across the top has a 45 amp speed control, I read that on the box, a 3800 kV motor, and this is a 540 size can. It's supposed to have a high torque servo in there and we'll see how that works. The servo doesn't move, it's got a spring for a servo saver right here, so I don't know how well that's gonna function, but we'll find out. I've never really seen a servo saver like this before, and I'll get you a close up of that right now. Um, this thing has a spring on each side which allows it to well, protect the servo, I'm sure. Um, I don't know how it's gonna work under power, but we'll find out. The drivetrain looks pretty simple. It's got a nice cover over the differential, or this isn't even a differential, this is a spool. So it doesn't have a slipper clutch or anything in there, that's direct drive. So from the pinion to the spare gear, straight to the differential's front and rear. It does have oil-filled shocks. They feel a little bit on the tight side for what we're gonna do with it, but we'll see how it works. Um, they do feel pretty good, but they are a little bit tight for the way I like to set things up. Also, it has mud flaps on the bumper here, and I, it looks really, really light. So I don't know how well that's going to hold up. We're not going to get super crazy with this one as far as off ramps and whatnot. This is going to be short course testing. So odds are we're just going to take this out to the track to begin with and see how it works, because that's where the shootout's going to take place. But everything else looks pretty good. It's got aluminum mounts for the shocks. It's got a good bumper with a, con a concussion ring in the front here. But again, everything looks really small in here. So let's get this up against one of the other ones and see size for size how it stacks up there. Okay, so what we have here is this is an inch narrower than the Slash Ultimate and four inches shorter. So this is a much smaller car, 10th scale, 10th scale. And they both rate up in the same scale. However, that one's a lot smaller. Now, hopefully it has some performance to go with it, but we'll find out. Let's see exactly what the weight differences are. Okay, with the scale zeroed out, let's see. Now the Slash has a comparable battery on it, so it should weigh about the same thing. And we're looking at five pounds, 14 ounces complete, ready to go. And then the Red Cat, it weighs in at four pounds, 9.6 ounces. So it's much lighter as well. 
we'll see how that affects things. All right, with that behind us, there's only one thing left to do. Let's take it out and run it. Let's get a battery on the charger and we'll take it out and see what this thing's made of and see if it even qualifies to be in the shootout. This should be pretty cool, guys. Check this out. Okay guys, there's the running footage for the Blackout. That's the Red Cat SC Pro. And you know, I had some fun with this. I really did. It was, it was it's really kind of small for what I was expecting. And here, let's go ahead and give you a quick demonstration of that. Over here, we've got the Low CTT Pro. And this is one of the high performance short course trucks. And it's just about exactly the same footprint as the Traxxas Ultimate. Or, here we go. There, and if you notice, those are tail to tail, and see how much smaller that one is than the other ones. We really wanted to, you know, potentially get this in the short course shootout, but guys, it really doesn't belong there. It, it Technically, it is a short course truck, but the performance of it, although it is fast, it does have its issues, and it doesn't control well enough to actually get in there and be competitive. So this one right here, is not going to make it into the shootout. However, we're going to go ahead and give you the review and let you know what we really think of this thing because uh, you guys know we're not sponsored by anyone, so you're going to get the brutal truth with this. So let's get after it. All right, so let's not sugarcoat this for you. You know, this is our first Red Cat and, you know, the price should have been a ticket. You know, this was a little over $250, I believe, when we picked it up. And that was definitely a red flag, but let's take a quick look at the build again, just to make sure that everything is the way it should be. Now, 
we did take the bumper off the back and that is right here and the bumper and the mud flaps are an issue and we'll get to that in a minute so we took those off of here and the concussion ring on the bumper is in good shape all of the suspension arms held up really well the motor system is surprisingly nimble it's quick it's got a pretty good high speed for what it is it's not geared very high but for its footprint it actually goes pretty good the gearing, it was a little noisy when it came out of the box, but it smoothed out after a little running. And all of the shocks and the towers and everything, they held up pretty good. And initially we were just gonna run this on the track. So we took it out to the track and gave it a sample. And it didn't control well enough for that to be the whole video. So we decided since it was more of a toy than it was a performance race car, we'd go ahead and bash it and see how it holds up. Now. The cool thing about this is if you're new to the hobby, you like the look of the short course trucks, but you don't have a big area to run in. You have the driveway, the sidewalk, the roadway, providing that it's a clear area and you don't have any danger of cars and whatnot. This is pretty good for that application. The tires hold up pretty well on the pavement and it controls pretty good, but this thing likes to swap ends in a hurry. So when you finally get full pin on the thing, it tends to bring the rear end around and a lot of that has to do with the length of the wheelbase. Kind of a short wheelbase car, guys, so it's gonna wanna be swap endy on it. There's no assistance from the radio. The radio, however, this I was pleasantly surprised about. So the Red Cat radio that came with it, and that's this little monster, it actually fits the hand pretty good and it's comfortable. It really does feel nice and it functions good. We had absolutely no problems with this. It is a good radio, it had good range, it's quick and it did the job. So I was really impressed with the radio. Also, since it was, well, squirrely, we were unable to go beyond 2S. Now we thought about putting the 3S battery in it but it was hard enough to control under 2S in normal situations. I know I could have got more speed out of it on the pavement if I'd have gone 3S, but under 2S conditions, it was still a whirlwind. It, you pin it and around it would come. It was really hard to straighten out. And if you're new to the hobby, this car right here will definitely teach you how to drive because it requires some skill to run it. Now, uh, if you're just nice and easy on things and have a good time with it, it's really well designed for that and it held up pretty good. We really didn't have any damages. However, that one point we talked about, the mud flaps. Now, these things are bizarre. Uh, it's really thin, it's really wobbly and noodly. And if you see right here, we wore through this one. And the reason for that is simply this. So let's take the car again, and I'll show you how this works. So on the back of the car, this mounts with two screws, and it mounts right on here. Oh, Let's get it on here properly. So it mounts on here in this fashion. Okay, mounts on there in that fashion. And the problem is these arms neatly tuck inside the wheels. So as soon as you back up and hit anything of substance, it tucks it inside the wheel and holds it there. Now, the problem is it'll do both. So you'll basically have a mud flap jammed in here and you'll have a mud flap jammed in there and you don't have to bash it hard to get it to do that, guys. It does it real easy, it doesn't take a lot. The problem is the mud flaps hang down far enough to where you don't have to hit much texture to pull those mud flaps under. It goes under the tire and snaps inside the wheels and it starts making some pretty weird noises and right away you may not notice it. Once I found out what was going on, we popped the mud flaps out. I'm like, okay, that was weird, right? So let's try it again. We get out there, we run it again, less than a minute later they're stuck inside the wheels again the only answer really was to take this off once this was off it ran pretty good we didn't have any issues with that anymore that was that kind of solved it all at once so that was kind of neat so it's powered really well 2s it's still squirrely um, and the other part that i'm really not a fan of and i think this needs to be addressed right away is Right in here, early on I showed you this servo saver that they have and it's just got kind of a loose spring over the top of this arm that hangs out. So when you move the wheels, the servo doesn't even move because it's pretty soft. The problem with that is, as you're driving, you center it up, you use your trims, get it to where it goes straight. You play with it just for a minute, let off and let it roll and it'll go left, okay? Adjust it just a little bit real quick with the wheel and it'll go right because there's not enough tension in the spring to actually center the wheels. It gets it close, but it doesn't really get it centered. And I understand 
pretty much the idea of having a soft spring here is if you're new and this is kind of an entry level kind of toy vehicle, when you hit something, you won't destroy the servo. And of course, it'll kind of center up and it's not supposed to go long distances, super straight and fast like a big oval track or an off-road track because this is exceptionally difficult to keep on the track. It doesn't like to go straight very well. It likes to hook hard when you get into it and it tries to pull itself off the road. All that being said, now it's time to get into our four questions. And if you watch the channel, you know what they are. Is it fun? Is it durable? Is it worth the money? And where does it stack up in our collection? Question number one, is it fun? Well, you guys know that we run high-end stuff here. We use the, we usually get into the higher, you know, RCs in the industry to see what makes them tick. You kind of get jaded by that. You wind up yeah, expecting more out of a car. And I realized the price was down on this one, so my expectations weren't all that high. But the problems with the steering and the short wheelbase on it didn't even come up to that abbreviated expectation of what I normally would expect from a short course truck like this. So at my level, at our level here at the channel, this one really does fall short on the fun level because yes, it is quick, no, you can't really control it all that well unless you start doing some upgrades. Keep in mind, this is an out of the box, you know, review. So we're not doing any upgrades. This is what you get when you buy one. So as far as the fun level goes, guys, it was really kind of disappointing overall. We're only going to give this one five out of 10 for fun, because if we could have got it under control, it is pretty fast, but it just couldn't be done with the settings. And question number two, is it durable? Well, yeah, we didn't actually break anything. So it's really pretty durable as far as that goes. For the size and what it is, like I say, I don't consider this to be a high-end car. This is more of a toy entry-level type thing. So that puts it in kind of a different category from the rest of this stuff. Still, we didn't break anything. And we, if you've seen the footage here just a, a second ago, you saw that we pushed it pretty hard and we ran into some pretty serious obstacles and still it held up just fine. Um, the only issue that I had, and it actually wasn't a break, was the mud flaps. They just got in the way. They weren't designed properly. They shouldn't ever be allowed to reach underneath the wheels and get locked inside. So that's kind of a bummer deal there. So those had to come off because as soon as you back up, it was a problem. It just was. So as far as this goes for durability, you know, it's a pretty durable truck. It really is. But it doesn't go all that fast and it doesn't control very well. So, I mean, it is quick. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty quick, but it doesn't hit really high speeds. And for the money, it gets it's what you expect to get for that kind of deal. So for this, as far as durability goes, I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 for durability because for what it is, it held up good. However, if I had to put 3S in it, which I was loath to do just because of the controllability of the vehicle, it might have shown the frailties a little better, so we're going to bring it up 8 to 10 for durability. And question number three, is it worth the money? Well, we're talking about $260 for a complete RTR with battery and the charger. It is literally a complete set. It's got the charger that goes with the battery. It has a fully functioning radio that works pretty good, and the car has everything you need to get it going right out of the box. You know, I've spent over $100 just for a charger, and I've spent that much for batteries. So just in the cost of that, you know, this is pretty impressive for what you get. However, when you spend that little amount of money, don't get your hopes up too high. Still, if you're just getting into the hobby and like I say, you have a restricted area where you can play and you really like the look of it because this really is a cool looking little truck. And it looks pretty cool on the, they drop it in the driveway and go ripping around with it. It's really awesome right there too. So depending on what your hopes and expectations are, if that's your game, this thing is definitely worth the money. But if you're expecting a little performance out of it, if you're expecting some controllability or the ability to run with others that have the other short course trucks, you're gonna be disappointed. And if that's your realm, it's definitely not worth the money because you could stack a little more money on that and get something that's a bit more competitive than this one. And I really didn't want to trash on Red Cat because this is our first sampling and I really think they've got some other stuff out there that could be really well, you know, put together. But until we get our hands on them, we really won't know. So this is our showing for that. Is it worth the money? 
Well, it's really kind of a fine group that that points at. And so for that reason, we're going to give it six out of 10 for value. Because yes, if that's your niche, it is worth the money. But if you're in the other niche where you expect a little bit more, it's not. And question number four, where does this stack up in our collection? You guys already know this isn't going to be in the top 10, right? It's more of an, 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 an it's more of an entry level thing and it's not it's not going to compete with what we have here at the channel. So it's going to be way down in the listings. But still, don't let that fool you. It's still a pretty fun little car to play with if you play with it in the right situation. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It's awesome when you do, and it lets us know what you think of the content. You know, we don't generally tear something apart as far as you know, verbally abuse a product because we usually pick stuff that really speaks to us. This one was recommended by a viewer and we had never seen one, you know? So I got online and we agreed and I ordered one and brought it in and I was really surprised at the price to start with. So this is really cool and for what you get, you know, if you're just new, that thing is pretty cool. But still, if you guys have some red cats that you think are cool, please leave them in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studios saying, keep bashing guys.